Hey everybody, it's Aaron from the Kilby Life bringing another Kilby Life video. In this video, I will talk about how to set goals. And right now, it is hot. What does that have to do with anything? Nothing. I'm so disappointed in myself. First thing I need to do is get rid of these flies in here. I don't want to die anytime soon. Got to do something about this. I did something. I finally did something. Now I think I'm gonna live. Wake up. I struggle with goals. So I'm like, okay, Aaron, you need to make some goals. How do you make goals? How do you teach someone to make goals? What do you do? I came up with five, one, two, three, four, five. I think five things, maybe six. I think I came up with five or six things that are gonna be really good tools for us to make goals for me and for you, anyone that is trying to make some kind of goal when it comes to your health, what you're eating, your fitness level and stuff like that. I would say the first thing you need to do is make sure that your goal is very specific. I will lose 22 pounds of fat. Well, what about I will lose 22 pounds? Well, sure, but it's gonna be specifically fat that you wanna lose. You don't wanna lose 22 pounds of muscle, do you? So be very specific on what your actual goal is. Make sure you find a place, write down the specific goal. I want to lose 22 pounds of fat. I want to get sub 20% body fat. And that's been something that I've been thinking, hey, Aaron, could you get down there? Can you get 15% body fat, is that a goal you should write? So I'm I'm going through these things, like these are how to make goals, but I'm thinking this for myself also. Is this a goal that I wanna make? I'm trying to be specific about what I wanna do. I wanna make sure that goal is also measurable. It's something that you could measure, like you could track your weight weekly, uh, monthly. A lot of people say like, don't just sit on that scale every single day. But I would say yes, get on that scale every single day until that scale pisses you off, <laughs> pardon my French, until you get mad at that scale, until you get annoyed at that scale because that scale has got control over you because you're taking it so seriously and you wanna see that number go down and you're paying attention, then I think is a good point that you could go the weekly or maybe even monthly because you've learned what the scale can do. It can take control of you, it can have mastery over you, but the scale is supposed to be a tool to see where we're headed, but a lot of us just look at it as like a... Like a dear friend that we never actually wanna to talk to, um, unless they have something nice to say. You could get addicted to weighing yourself and it could become very emotionally draining. But make sure that it's measurable. And make sure it's actually an achievable goal. If you're five foot four and your goal is to be six foot four and you're in your 20s, it's probably not gonna happen without like stilts. There's some things that are just, you can't change, it's your genetics. So you gotta be realistic on if it's an achievable goal because I don't want you to have some goal that you're never going to attain, never get there. And that being said, sometimes we can be a little bit foolish about that. We'll get to a place where we're like, okay, I'm gonna have to readdress this goal or this part of it because I wasn't thinking clearly because I didn't know what I didn't know. Let's say if you're obese or you're morbidly obese, don't shoot to be sub 15% body fat right off the bat. Try to get down to 25% body fat or 27% body fat, which is perfectly healthy. Some people say that's overweight. For an adult person, 25, 27% body weight is pretty darn good. Also, when setting a goal, you gotta make sure that it's relevant. What am I expecting to heal? I'm expecting to heal my sleep apnea. I'm expecting to heal my type two diabetes. I'm expecting to lose weight and not be obese anymore. I am expecting to not be depressed. I'm expecting not to have IBS. I'm expecting to heal my mindset when it comes to food and not worship it or be addicted to it. I'm expecting to reduce my risk of disease. You gotta really make sure it's relevant. You don't get on a carnivore diet to be a better beet farmer. 
but I guess you could be a better beet farmer if you were on a carnivore diet because you could maybe run faster, jump higher, dig beets better. Beets, bears, beets, Battlestar Galactica. The fifth thing that you need to know and not final, I got one extra one, is that you need to set a time goal. This shouldn't be something that just drags on and on and on. It's one of those things that you'll also need to know that you might have to reassess. Like I was saying earlier when it comes to make sure it's achievable. You might be getting close to like a 90 day or a 30 day challenge completion and think, man, I'm gonna have to go longer on this. You might have to reassess, reevaluate the time that it's gonna take you to heal or to reach these goals. And that's okay. That means you're paying attention to your goals, that you're staying focused on your goals. Maybe you'll get there faster and then you're like, now what? Well, make some new goals, start again, start at the beginning of this and make a new goal. Be specific in it. It needs to be time bound, but really a health journey lasts your whole life. We need to be on a health journey for our entire lives, for the rest of our lives. A lot of us like to think 60 days, 90 days, one year, and then I'm out doing what? No, just build on what you've learned when it comes to what real adequate nutrition is how you look at food, look at all the progress you made. I would say film it, measure your body so you have non-scale victories and continue to do it your whole life. Document it, work on it, and do the best you can where you are. So the last thing I would like to talk about is not necessarily how to make a goal, but if you wanna be successful in a goal, I would say don't try to do it alone. You don't need to do it alone. There's no need to do it alone. There's a lot of communities on YouTube. I know Carnivore Quest. I know Frigno Freedom. Um, I know Amanda from Carnivorous Me. I've seen Laura Spath. Like I'm probably missing like communities of people. Dr. Ken Berry has communities and stuff like that. But you need to get in a community. You need to have some accountability in your life. And it might suck some days and some days you're going to be very thankful for that accountability and the community. Sometimes the community will drag you down because it feels like no one's listening. No one's listening to you or your advice or you go out there and you put yourself out there. And no one gives you the advice you want to hear or you get ignored and stuff like that. But that doesn't take away from the reality that if you want to be successful in your goals or on a health journey, you're going to need, community and support. So that was why here at the Kill Me Life, we started our locals community. I'll put the link down in the description. Join our locals community. Like-minded people, low carb, carnivore diet, faith, food, family, and maybe even fitness. Because these things are important to me and these are the things that I'm working on. These are the goals that I'm setting for my life to be a better Christian man. I'm trying to be a better family man. I'm trying to be better when it comes to my food and my diet. And I'm also trying to be better when it comes to my fitness. And so I would just challenge you to join that community. That's also one of the ways you could support the work we're do doing over here at the Kilby Life. Another way you can really support us and it really helps is click that like button, hit that subscribe button, and also share this video to anyone who you think might need it or just share it everywhere <laughs> hopefully someone sees it and then later on i'll get a message saying hey, hey someone sent me this video about goals and carnivore diets can you tell me more about it hey can i join your community hey years go by they're like man thank you thank you i set some goals i accomplished the goals and if it wasn't for you guys my life would be radically different but that's how i got here because some of you guys encouraged me and goaded me on. Also, if you don't think accountability is powerful, I'm gonna share just part of a random message that said this. After our talk, I felt guilty that I had ice cream in the house. I dumped it outside in the woods for my animal friends, LOL. None of us are perfect people. 
it's good that we walk together so if one of us falls down the other one could help us out thanks for watching these kilby live videos kilby out what's this video shut it down shut her down shutting her down where's all the buttons shutting her down